Hi, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to go through a uh, Fusion 4 overview. Fusion 4 was recent, recently released, and I would like to uh, give you a feel for um, some of the new capabilities in Fusion 4 and give you a general overview of Fusion itself. Um, so I'm going to start uh, with a um, uh, quick agenda, um, just to give you a feel for where we're going to be going. I'll start off with an overview of LucidWorks, a uh, quick overview of Fusion 4, and then cover uh, three areas of major changes in Fusion 4, um, starting with uh, the introduction of apps as a concept and how you go about building apps with Fusion, um, then talking about some of the scalability improvements, um, and finally uh, finishing out with um, a coverage of our um, smart jobs, um, app insights, and new experiment management capabilities. So um, just a quick background about myself. I am the SVP of engineering here at LucidWorks, um, focused very heavily on the development of the Fusion platform. Um, as well as our uh, contributions to the Apache Solar Project. Um, some of you may know me as the author of Solar in Action as well. Um, and um, today, um, I assume most of you guys probably know about LucidWorks, but if not, um, I'd like to give you a little bit of an introduction about what LucidWorks does. So LucidWorks is a globally uh, distributed software company based out of San Francisco that builds the world's best uh, search and data-driven application platform, LucidWorks Fusion. We uh, solve big problems for the world's brightest businesses. Um, but fundamentally, um, you know, we really like to solve big problems and um, have lots of customers who um, can sort of a, attest to the, um, the, the power of the Fusion platform. Uh, so I could tell you about Reddit, for example, um, where we've helped the sixth largest website in the world solve their major source of user dissatisfaction by fixing search and driving relevant search results thousands of times a second using LucidWorks Fusion. Uh, or I can tell you about Vegas.com, uh, where we've been able to help them um, convert 33% more of their searches into sold event tickets using Fusion. Um, or a major home improvement company, um, I could mention, who's uh, been able to increase checkouts by almost 19%, driving millions of dollars in revenue. Or a Blue Stem brand, who came to us and saw a 50% increase um, in uh, their conversions just by turning Fusion on. Uh, Red Hat, um, who we talk about a lot, um, is another example of a company that was able to increase click-through rates by 200% uh, and reduce their total cost of ownership by 91% immediately after, after putting Fusion Signals capability into place, um, in this case saving substantial time and cost to their support team as a result of dropping support tickets by 50,000. Um, this graph um, from Red Hat shows the immediate change in daily click-through rate that they saw after they switched to Fusion. I mean, I could provide, provide you with countless other case studies from our over 400 customers across the global 2000. But needless to say, uh, we help these companies um, and their customers solve hard problems at LucidWorks. And we do this through Fusion, our end-to-end -end data and discovery platform for building insight-driven smart applications. So what is Fusion? Uh, for those of you who may not be as familiar, uh, Fusion is basically um, composed of uh, three key parts. There's Fusion Server, Fusion AI, and Fusion App Studio. Uh, Fusion Server, to start out, is our highly scalable data store. Uh, it's a search engine and key value store. So it's able effectively to consistently handle many thousands of complex queries every second while enforcing end-to-end -end security. Fusion provides countless uh, swarm capable connectors to a variety of data sources and has the ability to parse and ingest almost any kind of data. That's what allows you to, for example, create a true 360-degree view of anything that's important to you. Uh, Fusion also uh, leverages, um, uh, Fusion also uh, provides federation capabilities. And while we leverage Solar as our primary data store, we're actually able to search and federate across uh, most other major search systems as well. Fusion AI, the um, next you know, uh, key area of Fusion, offers countless machine learning capabilities uh, that learn from your users and your data to drive intelligence within your applications. Fusion AI is pre-tuned, more relevant, and faster than any competing offering, and it's also highly pluggable and customizable, as most of the machine learning jobs run on Spark and can be chained together, giving you the flexibility to either use Fusion AI out of the box, or if you want to, you could also have your data scientists roll up their sleeves and get working on their own enhancements. Um, some examples of where Fusion AI can be beneficial um, include things like productivity apps, where Fusion AI gives you the ability to be assistive 
to answer questions, to spot trends in relationships, or discover experts. Making customers happy by quickly putting the right information in front of them um, is an area where we would help with operational intelligence. Um, for example, by connecting them to products that they're looking to buy or helping them with problems down the road. Uh, it's about your search engine really understanding how people behave and ultimately look for things within the system. And for operational intelligence, uh, Fusion is all about spotting hidden trends, outliers, and anomalies, or in other words, giving you advantage you didn't know, that you didn't know existed. Those are some of the key areas where Fusion AI can be of assistance. And finally, how do you put all of this in front of people in a way that makes sense to their particular requirements? How do you create the sort of modern, high-fidelity applications that we've all come to expect in hours or days as opposed to weeks or months? Uh, App Studio is the way we do that. Um, with App Studio, we've essentially researched how people interact with different types of data and codified it um, in uh, reusable components that you can use to build uh, user experiences for your end users. Uh, so keep in mind, for example, people are not good at necessarily envisaging envisaging an outcome from specifications and wireframes. So App Studio allows you to work with real data in real time. Um, and using our wizard-based approach, you can essentially um, allow your users to see their data flowing through an application in the first 15 minutes. And then from there on, you basically rinse, lather, and repeat until it works exactly the way you want it to. Um, this is an example of where, you know, after you've made some adjustments to your application, set it up, you can flip to the code editor and continue just customizing as needed to build your search application at the end. And um, as you can see, there's you know, many different capabilities for really building out a full search application doing this. When you take all this together, Fusion Server, Fusion AI, and App Studio, all, those all make up Fusion. And uh, Fusion, uh, as you fit all that together, allows you to take data you know, from the wild to build tailored modern applications. It's all about taking your data, having Fusion learn and make sense of it, and then delivering intelligence and insights back to end users through smart applications that are tailored to the needs of different audiences. And of course, from an end user standpoint, they don't care about everything in the middle, you know, server AI app studio. They just care about the, end, the, uh, the final um, user experience. Um, so from them, all that complexity is completely invisible. They just expect perfection, curated, and in context. They may not care where individual information is coming from, but what they do care about is what, um, is what and how it informs them and how it ultimately is made actionable. In other words, what can this dashboard tell me that I didn't know before? But also, how effective are you actually in your efforts? Fusion App Insights, introduced in Fusion 4, will tell you exactly how people are using your applications and whether they're finding what they need. It answers questions like, where are your users coming from? How are they getting the answers to their questions? And does one approach work better than you know, another approach that you might take? Um, these give you some examples of the kinds of um, things you find in App Insights, which I'll show you a demo of later on in the presentation. Um, and so with Fusion, all of this can be done, with Fusion 4, all this can be done on premise in your, or in your own data center, um, in the cloud, or through some hybrid deployment across you know, your on-premise data center in the cloud. That's the power Fusion provides, leveraged and delivered in a way that makes sense to you. Um, and as a quick aside, uh, LucidWorks actually launched a new site search SaaS product offering last week. Um, there's going to be another webinar on April 11th from our VP of Cloud Solutions where he'll be presenting another, um, he'll be presenting the site search application. If you want to go on our website, you can actually sign up for a trial of this and you can be up and running, actually powering your website um, using the capabilities from Fusion in as little as 15 minutes with actually no coding required. A uh, quick preview of site search actually, um, once you load it up, you can just point to data sources containing the content that you want to crawl, and then ultimately, uh, or I guess you could also upload it yourself or you know, push to an API. And then once you've done that, you have a fully functioning website uh, search engine up in minutes with every aspect of user experience being customizable through a simple drag and drop interface. And when I say every aspect is customizable, I mean every aspect. You can grab any panel you've configured and drop it on your own website, and the exact same controls and panels will render on your website anywhere, anywhere it is on the web. So if you are using WordPress, Squarespace, or your own proprietary website, it's all really as simple as dropping a quick snippet in place, and you're up and running. 
And while we're not here today to talk about our site search products, because uh, you, um, you can you know, go to the other webinar for that, what we are here today to talk about is um, how Fusion 4 enables the building of end-to-end -end apps like site search uh, that can be run on-premise in the cloud or in a hybrid mode across both. So without further ado, let's do a deeper dive actually into the capabilities of Fusion 4. So Fusion 4 itself, um, you know, internally I like to refer to it as our cloud-ready smart apps release. Um, and one of the key drivers behind Fusion 4 um, really was making sure that all of the components in Fusion 4 run well in a fully containerized environment. So our cloud platform, for example, is built on Kubernetes and uses Docker containers. Um, so we've really made sure that Fusion itself, dependent, no matter how you deploy it, um, can really run in those kind of environments. And regarding smart apps, uh, we'll actually spend a good bit of uh, the rest of the webinar demonstrate, demonstrating what those mean. So for the core uh, capabilities in Fusion 4, um, you know, the major um, new features include the addition of apps, which are end-to-end -end solutions built on Fusion, uh, from search engine configs to business logic all the way to end-user experiences. App Insights, which you saw just a minute ago, is a new analytics tool within Fusion that helps you visualize and discover deep insights into how users are interacting with your app. From their searches to their clicks to locations and even device information, App Insights lets you dive in and really spot trends and discover information about usage patterns and success rates across all of your apps that ultimately enable uh, you, know, you to drive success there. Experiment management is a central new feature in Fusion 4 that enables you to set up multivariate testing and measure things like click-throughs, conversion rates, and all the common search relevancy metrics like NDCG, MRR, um, et cetera. Um, and to even specify your own metrics if you want to, uh, to measure and graph using um, uh, you know, a SQL query of your choice, if you want, since uh, Fusion provides full SQL support against your data. Uh, with Fusion 3.1, we actually had several smart jobs included, uh, for those of you who uh, remember, uh, but we've gone overboard in Fusion 4, introducing over a dozen new jobs, handling everything really from multiple types of clustering and classification algorithms to revamp signals, uh, Signals 2.0 implementation, to finding related term vectors using word to vec for query expansion, um, to automatically generating ideal ranking, an ideal ranking golden standard, uh, set from implicit user feedback, to auto discovery of misspellings and head tail analysis, you know, you name it. So there's all kinds of really great smart job capabilities in Fusion 4. Um, additionally, the new connectors SDK uh, really represents our next generation of scalability and reliability, as well as the ability for you to plug and play your own easy to implement plugins into Fusion to ingest data from any external data source. Um, and of course, those are just the major features that we'll have time to cover today. Um, I could easily spend hours going through all the capabilities in Fusion 4, but given our time constraints for the webinar, uh, let's just go ahead and dive into um, some of the things you can do with Fusion 4. The first major concept I'd like to introduce um, in Fusion 4 is the new apps concept. In previous versions of Fusion, everything centered around collections of data. While collections are still there and important, in Fusion 4, we introduced the concept of an app which is intended to represent an end-to-end -end solution composed of multiple objects. In Fusion, everything is an object, uh, collections, data sources, and now even the end user interface. And these objects are all linked together to represent their dependencies uh, as your app is being built. It's a something that groups many objects together into a solution, and the app and all the objects linked to it can be exported and re-imported as a zip file from any Fusion cluster to any other Fusion cluster. Imagine being able to build an end-to-end data-driven application, save it to a zip file, or version control contents if you prefer, and then send to your colleague. Your colleague can then import the app and have an exact running copy, make changes, and then send back, or you can deploy this end-to-end -end app to any running Fusion cluster in the world. All of this is possible with Fusion 4. So to introduce you to the idea of how you would actually go about building an app, let's fire up Fusion and proceed with a fresh installation. Um, so in this case, I'm logging into Fusion. I'm um, then going to see a screen prompting me to create my first app. So in this case, I'll make an enterprise search app and um, give it a color and click continue. Um, from here on the main launcher screen, you'll actually see um, uh, the tile pop up for that app. And now if I click on it, I can go in and make any changes to that app or the objects contained within it. Uh, what I really want to do now, though, is go through our quick start, which will allow me to quickly get data ingested into the application. 
So the first thing I'll do when I click Next is select the app that I want to work with. I select my default collection, and then from there I can choose a data set or, in this case, I point to a website. So I'm going to point to CNN.com so that I can crawl some news articles. And um, as uh, the crawl is happening right now, we're sampling some documents from CNN. Um, I could then come in here if I want to format the results for display, I can, or I hit continue and add facets or other capabilities. So in this case, I'm going to choose an author facet on the author field for continue. And now I've ingested, um, or now I've set up my ingestion for content to get into my fusion cluster. Um, so at this point, I have documents from CNN in my, in my app, um, and I could do one of multiple things. I can either um, go into my index workbench if I want to do some additional ETL and processing of the data as it's coming into the app, or if I like the way the data has been ingested, I can go into my query workbench and configure how the, the search side of the app works, where my you know, requests come in, where, where the queries come in, if I want to enable highlighting or autocomplete or improve relevancy or do some learning to rank, I would do that in my query workbench. Um, at this point, though, I have a fully working app end-to-end, -end, at least from an API standpoint, so I could actually go ahead and hit the Fusion APIs and make use of the data I've ingested. Um, but seeing as how this is a demo, let me actually open up the index workbench and show you how I would go about doing um, ETL for um, the next uh, step here. So as I open up the index workbench, um, you'll see you know, some helpful hints on how to get started. Um, but after I've done that, you can actually see some simulated results that have come from my app as well as my parsers and my pipeline stages. So the pipeline stages can be injected anywhere in this um, index pipeline to do things like machine learning, natural language processing, or just mapping you know, fields in different ways. After I've configured my ETL, I flip over here to my query workbench where I can um, you know, look at the results, format them, um, and uh, if I want to you know, change the display fields, or even compare two sets of results side by side. Mm -hmm. So if I want to see my before and my after, I could actually come in and change my pipeline to boost certain documents or block certain documents, um, or even you know, add from any number of stages for you know, uh, query manipulation, relevancy tuning, um, and, and natural language processing and machine learning. When I'm all done changing my pipeline, I'll save it. Um, and now if I go to hit the API to run searches against my application, um, it will actually um, you know, reflect the changes I just made. Um, you know, the Fusion Admin UI here has lots of different capabilities you can use to configure your applications. Uh, but one of the interesting areas that's been introduced in Fusion 4 is our App Insights capability. And so for any app that's running, uh, this is where all of the signals, you know, the clicks, the searches, all of that traffic is fed in, back into Fusion. Um, and this gives me the ability to do things like look at events and, and sessions that users have run, um, even look at the data and add to it. Um, but anyway, so you've now seen me walk through the index workbench to configure ETL, the query workbench to configure my query time behavior. Uh, the next thing I want to show you, obviously, is the last mile of an app, uh, because an app isn't complete until you actually have an end user experience. And so um, if you leverage uh, Fusion's App Studio capabilities, then we actually um, allow you to walk through a workflow to build your end user interface, again, without having to write a single line of code. Um, so to get started here, I'm going to uh, point at the uh, Fusion app that I just configured. I'm going to hit Connect, and um, I'm going to proceed through a series of, uh, of uh, steps in my workflow to end up with a uh, template for an app out of the box. So after I connect to Fusion, um, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the collection and the pipeline within my app that I want to um, work with. And um, let's use this, this intercept price search pipeline that we created. And now uh, App Studio is actually analyzing the data to try to make some suggestions to me in terms of which fields I should be looking at um, out of the, the documents that come back. And it makes suggestions based upon um, you know, what should the title be, what should the results be, uh, what are the IDs associated with the items. I can then choose you know, which field I want to use for my results description. And then if I want to add additional facets or fields, uh, for example, author, you know, we looked at that earlier. Um, and why don't we just scroll down to uh, if there's anything else interesting that we might want to add here. Um, let's go with uh, this section right here. That will make sense. So if I click Next, um, you know, I'm going to just give my application a name, pick a color scheme uh, like this blue color here. Uh, we'll name this my CNN application. And um, now when I save and launch the app, you'll see that walking through that wizard actually allows us to generate 
um, a fully working end-to-end -end application where I can see uh, my search results from the articles that I crawled from CNN. Um, and from this point, we actually have a code editor, which I won't show today, but that code editor lets me make changes too. So if I run a search here for Tesla, find a result, you, know, you can see that you know, I've sort of got this end-to-end -end working application where you know, in, in a minute, I pointed at CNN.com, index some data, um, had the ability to configure my um, ETL on the index workbench, the ability to configure my query behavior on the query workbench, and then walk through App Studio to build my end user interface. All of those objects and capabilities that I've built up are now packaged in an app that um, you know, exists right here um, as my enterprise search application. And so the next thing I want to show you after you've built that end-to-end -end application is what you can actually do with it. Because in reality, um, while building an app in Fusion is great, the question that then comes up is how do you deploy that application? How do you share that application? And how do you, you know, version control and make changes to it? And in Fusion 4, thankfully, that's as simple as um, exporting um, and importing. So I'll show you here, for example, if I click on my enterprise search application and go to the settings, I can just click on export app to zip and I will immediately be able to download a zip file that contains the entire configuration of that app that I just built into end. Um, if I want to come in and then delete the application, you can see all of the objects and related objects to that application that are linked to it, and I can wipe them from the system. And um, this will re restore me back to what is effectively a, an empty fusion. You see now I'm back at that initial launch screen. Uh, from here though, to kind of prove that this works end to end, let's uh, now take, click import and let's actually um, create the uh, application um, that we were just working with. So um, if I click Import App, I uh, choose the file. There's the Enterprise Search zip file that I just downloaded. And uh, lo and behold, um, give it just a second, um, Fusion is going to present me with a list of all of the objects and links and everything that are, were built as part of my application. Um, I, can, you know, I successfully imported them all. And now if I look back at my home screen, I actually see my app back up and running. Even though I completely wiped it away from Fusion, now that it, uh, entire end-to-end -end application, including the end-user interface and all of the search configuration, is back. And um, that's the power of apps in Fusion 4. I can, I, can build, I can build them from scratch, I can export them, I can import them, um, and they're very, very portable from any Fusion installation, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, or some hybrid. Um, and just to show you, um, here's an example of an enterprise search app that we've actually, um, not the one I just built, but here's an example of, of a fully featured end-to-end -end actual enterprise search application um, and what the objects look like. So one of the capabilities in Fusion 4 um, that we have is our Object Explorer. Um, this allows you to see all of the interrelationships between um, each of the objects inside of your app. So in this case, I've got an app, I've got a default collection, I've got many pipelines, I've got a recommendations pipeline, et cetera. Um, and I can actually come in here and click on you know, any individual object and click edit, and then I can come in and see the you know, parts of the pipeline and the different pipelines that I have that make up that app. Um, again, all of this packaged up together and delivered as an end user facing application that um, you know, is packaged up as a full solution end to end. Um, and so that wraps up the introduction to apps. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you in terms of um, what you can do with them, and again, tying collections and objects up into a, an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, the next section that I want to really dive into um, in terms of capabilities of Fusion 4 is um, how we focus on scale. And so now that we've covered build, export, import of apps, um, and all of that, um, you know, whether you're running in prem or in the cloud, um, we want to make sure that, you know, that Fusion can handle your scale needs. So in this section, let's go over some key performance and scale improvements that we've made in Fusion 4. Um, so as most of you probably know, uh, Fusion 4 um, at its core uses Apache Solar and Apache Spark, and LucidWorks invested very heavily in the Apache Solar project. Um, we use these, you know, Fusion Solar's, you know, most, the most scalable open source, you know, core information retrieval engine, and, you know, Spark is the most scalable distributed processing engine. So combining those together in the core of Fusion, really enables us to build a, a high-scale distributed um, application. Um, and our vision for solar and the level of investment we're making in solar is ultimately to make it what, what we like to call the infinitely scalable information retrieval engine. Um, so for example, um, you know, I want to be able to have um, a system where given enough servers, it can actually auto-scale to trillions of documents or unlimited numbers of queries without ever waking up your ops person. 
Uh, so I'm excited to share some of the key improvements we've made in this area that really power you know, Fusion 4 and um, you know, will continue to power you know, uh, us you know, going forward. So in Fusion 4, um, upgrading from Fusion 3.1, we've moved from Solar 6.5.1 in our core to Solar 7.2.1. Um, most of the investments we've made as a company have been around this notion of auto-scaling. Oh, and specifically, uh, we now have scaling policies. Um, we have autom the ability to automatically respond to cluster events. So for example, you know, if nodes are added or removed, um, the cluster will automatically utilize those in a way that um, you know, makes the most sense, is the most efficient use of resources. Uh, we also have an auto-scaling suggestions API. So for example, if your operations folks are not comfortable with the, cl the cluster automatically you know, requesting new servers and, and moving shards and replicas around, um, the API will actually give them a suggestion for how they should, um, you know, for API commands they can basically run that will automatically reconfigure the cluster um, in, in the way that best optimizes for resources. Um, in Solar 7, in, which is used by Fusion 4, we also have new rep index replica types. So this really pushes the boundaries for what we can do on the scalability front in terms of handling either, you know, high read um, scenarios where you've got, you know, tens of thousands or more queries coming in um, at any given time, um, or high write scenarios, for example, log scenarios where you've just got massive amounts, you have trillions of documents feeding into the engine, or some combination of both where I have both high reads and high writes. So these additions to, um, to Solar and to Fusion really enable us to uh, achieve much higher um, and uh, much more stable high volume uh, use cases than before. Um, additionally, bidirectional CDCR is now available, which means it's now possible to index to two separate clusters in different data centers if you want, and have them actually send um, documents back and forth to each other, um, or at least at a minimum failover from one data center to another, failover you know, indexing rights. Um, there have been lots of other performance improvements, um, you know, the addition of point fields, um, you know, now rolled out to all the features in Fusion um, and Solar. Um, the introduction of join fasting, which enables efficient complex relational style analytics, um, you know, addition of streaming evaluators, which allow for complex statistical analysis over streaming expressions, um, and, and many, more, many more capabilities uh, that really kind of drive the, the performance and scale that Solar provides. Uh, if you want more details on some of this, we had a What's New in Solar 7 webinar re previously. Uh, feel free to go watch that, and you can dive into a lot more details here. Um, the other major area of scalability that I want to highlight for Fusion 4 is our new connectors SDK. So um, specifically, um, in previous versions of Fusion, it wasn't really very easy to write your own connector um, and ultimately to you know, pull in additional data sources, which Lucidworks didn't already provide a connector for. So that all changes in Fusion 4. We've now built a simple, stable API for development of custom connectors. These connectors can be written in most popular programming languages and are built by design to run in a distributed mode, leveraging as many nodes as are available in the cluster for crawling um, and you know, just ultimately pulling data in uh, and processing the data. Capabilities like distributed crawling, incremental crawling, and scaling up and down are all built into the new connectors framework making them painless to implement through your own connectors. Finally, not only can the connectors built on the new SDK run distributed crawls, but they can actually be run either inside of Fusion, um, inside of your cluster, or actually outside of your Fusion cluster, which enables a truly hybrid Fusion deployment. So for example, if some of your data is hidden behind a firewall, you can simply start up the connector behind the firewall, point it to your Fusion cluster, either on-prem or in the cloud, and then you'll be able to push data to the Fusion cluster, even if Fusion can't initiate the connection. Best of all, even if you have hundreds of connectors running on various servers all over the world, you can still actually centrally manage the configuration for all of those connectors and start or stop them from your centralized Fusion cluster without having to have any direct access to the remote running connectors. Uh, I guess it, it, one thing to point out here, it, uh, it is worth noting that most of the native Fusion connectors um, have ac haven't actually been migrated to this new SDK yet. Um, several of them have, but um, you know, it's one of our top priorities over the coming year to make sure that every single connector in Fusion follows this new model and is able to run distributed crawls um, in a very, very highly performant way. So that's the coverage of scale, some of the scalability improvements in Fusion 4. Um, the next area I want to highlight is uh, this idea of you know, smarts and insights and what we've provided in Fusion 4. 
uh, because as we said, Fusion 4 is the cloud-ready smart apps release. So one of the key areas where we've added um, is uh, the, this Fusion Insights application. And you saw some screens um, showing this earlier in the presentation, but ultimately um, App Insights um, is kind of like Google Analytics. So where Google Analytics provides web traffic analytics for your website, uh, so too does Fusion App Insights provide powerful analytics about your apps. So App Insights provides customizable dashboards to let you visualize the query and behavioral analytics uh, from your end users. Um, and you can also see, see things like sessions, queries, locations, browsers, clicks, conversions, add to carts, or really any other signal that you choose to collect in your app. Fusion Smart Jobs can report up through App Insights. So things like head and tail analysis, which I'll show you um, in just a little bit, uh, search ranking metrics, and experiment A-B test runs, um, and the results from those are also reflected up through charts and graphs and App Insights. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll show you a demo of this in, in just a minute. Um, and then after App Insights, we also have lots of new smart jobs that have been introduced. So I talked about this earlier, um, and I've talked about smart jobs several times, but you may be wondering, you know, what are smart jobs, you know, how, how are they used? Um, smart jobs essentially are pre-built Spark jobs in Fusion that perform a machine learning or advanced analytics task. Um, you can see many examples on this slide with more and more being rolled out every release. Um, so one example of a smart job is the head and tail analysis job, which shows you your most common queries and then ties these queries uh, to other queries in the long tail, basically less commonly run queries. Um, so by tying these queries in the long tail back to more common queries, um, you're able to expand the known information about the query and ultimately enhance your understanding of the query intent from the user. Um, another example of a smart job is our new Signals 2.0 job um, and our recommenders jobs, uh, both of which are used to boost relevant results to users based upon prior signals um, and aggregate boosting or collaborative filtering. Um, similarly, there's jobs like our you know, spell checking jobs, uh, which enable you to find common misspellings from your search log data. Um, and you know, probably, you probably already have a good sense for some of these others, for example, for uh, you know, the multiple clustering and classification outlier detection jobs. You can probably imagine how you would use those for your um, you know, specific use cases. Um, and so let me just dive in here really quickly and show you um, an example of a smart job. So I'm gonna, for recommendations specifically, um, I just clicked a button in Fusion to enable these. And what Fusion's giving me is a recipe. So it's telling me these collections and these aggregations need to happen and these pipelines need to happen in order to create recommendations. And now that I've enabled that recipe, I can actually come in here and see automatically for me, you know, collections and different implementations of recommendations exist. So I've got a user item for user and an item for item recommendation here. What I'm gonna do is actually show you, you know, here's a query pipeline, here's a collection, and here's a Spark job that actually all go together to make a rec an end-to-end -end recommendation engine. So if I click on that Spark job like you just saw, um, I can actually come in here and configure all of the parameters and options for that Spark job to enable me to um, you know, change the relevancy of, and the way that recommendations work. And now if I come back in here and look at my item for user recommendations, you'll see the same kind of thing. This is my object graph showing me all of the pieces that go in to make this end-to-end -end recommendation engine. And I can actually come into my query pipeline and see exactly how these stages are configured, which fields they're using, how they're doing relevancy boosting. And ultimately, all of that tied together gives you an end-to-end -end recommendation engine. So it, it, if you recall just a second ago, you literally saw me go from you know, clicking a button to enable recommendations and generating all of the you know, objects throughout Fusion that are necessary to make that end-to-end -end recommendation pipeline. And then now just configuring um, you know, the objects as needed to, to make it, uh, the recommendations work as well as possible. And once I've done that, now I have an, a recommendations API that you could hit from any application. But if I actually come in to a real application, um, you know, with App Studio, you could, it's simply, you could use this as simply as just drag and drop. So for example, in this case, I'm gonna go to add module. I'm just gonna drag a recommendations panel, a smart panel, over into my end user interface. And I can actually see the recommendations coming back. Um, again, without having to write a single line of code, this is just out of the box with Fusion. We provide these recipes and ability to build these complex workflows to really drive uh, relevancy and intelligence to the application. So we talk about Fusion 4 being the smart application release. So that's what we're really talking about, is having these end-to-end -end AI driven features that can really deliver you know, value with minimal effort on your part, though 
everything is still you know, open, so you can actually go in and configure and, and make it work exactly how you want it to. Um, another area where we've added significantly on the, the smart um, side in Fusion 4 is our experiment management capabilities. So specifically, this en enables A-B testing and multivariate testing. So, um, you know, that basically allows you to measure the success of multiple variants relative to each other. So in a typical A-B experiment, you would, for example, set up a control group and one or more test groups or variants uh, that we do actually have, we, we do have support for multivariate testing, like I said, um, if you need something a little more complex. So for each experiment that you set up, you can choose from multiple metric types to measure success, including general ranking metrics, like click-through and conversion rates, and even your own custom metric to find as useful if you want. Um, one of the very interesting capabilities we provide in Fusion that you won't see anywhere else is the ability to simulate experiment results using your historic signals data that Fusion collects. So we've, we've tested and even published a research paper on our methodology here, but we're able to use the power of signals in Fusion to generate ideal rankings for queries based upon historical user, intera user interactions, and then we can use those to model how each experiment uh, variant would perform if it was actually put in front of end users. So this technique essentially allows you to run thousands of experiment variants before you ever actually impact end users with what could be poorly performing search results, uh, which, you know, effectively this increases your effectiveness in testing um, several orders of magnitude uh, because you're, you know, using the data you already have to predict how experiments are going to work um, at, before you have to actually put the experiment in front of your end users um, to determine the impact. Um, so this, you know, this experiment capability and this ability to tie things together end to end to make the, the learning of re relevant to from experiments automatic uh, is one of the many examples where Fusion is leading the way into the industry by providing a self-learning engine powered off the signals your users provide to your app. Um, so let me actually walk you through uh, quickly what experiments look like in Fusion uh, before I wrap up and uh, take some questions. Um, so here what you actually see is um, a, um, uh, this is an experiment that I've already configured, um, and um, actually let me take that for a second. Uh, so this is an experiment I've already configured, and I want to actually now um, go and see the traffic that's coming to it, just sort of what it's doing. So this is our, our App Insights capability. You can see, again, traffic coming in. Here's the you know, event. Here's the sessions. Here's you know, all the information that's being collected about users and, and what searches they're running and how they're performing. Um, I can come into my analytics, and I can actually see the, the top searches, what people are searching for. I can set up custom reports, et cetera. Um, but what I ultimately want to get to is actually to show you um, the experiment results themselves. Um, and so I, I don't have really good data here, but what I am showing you is just some like fake data just being sent in. Um, I can actually see like, you know, precision, recall, MRR, NDCG, all of these things being measured. I'm actually using my historic uh, query logs. Um, and obviously, you know, you can measure live traffic as well. That's the most common use case of this. Um, and in that case, you would actually, um, you know, be measuring things like click-through rates or conversions or, or what have you. Uh, but all of this is uh, possible in Fusion. Uh, so that's one example of um, where we leverage, you know, smarts and experiments. Um, another example um, I want to show you is actually um, our head tail analysis job. So in this case, um, we're you know, mining your, your query logs. We're trying to figure out what people are searching for. And, um, you know, for example, there, here's all the different smart jobs that you can choose from out of the box. Uh, but the head tail analysis job ties directly into the Fusion App Insights capability. So if I run this job um, and then flip over to my actual App Insights um, user interface, then I can pull up my head tail analysis. And what you can actually see here is a plot of all the queries that were run, um, you know, from the beginning all the way to the end. And you can see the top queries that people ran, the top tokens, the links to the queries, and lots of interesting information that gives you deep insights into what queries people are actually running on your system. Um, and it allows you to especially inspect the long tail and figure out how you might be able to better service those queries. Um, so all of that taken together, um, you know, really if you think of Fusion um, going from, um, you know, opening Fusion, going through that quick start, ingesting some data, configuring your query pipelines, and then building an end-to-end end-user interface, 
Um, Fusion is really the only end-to-end -end data and discovery platform for building smart applications. Um, as you saw, you can basically um, uh, you can basically take uh, you can start from scratch, pull the data in, build that whole thing end to end, and then take that application, export it, save it as a zip file, you know, import it to any other running Fusion, either you know your dev cluster, your test cluster, your production cluster, or even just you know other folks who want to experiment with what you have built. I um, mean, you can deliver that to them um, in an end-to-end -end fashion, um, and uh, you know, with smarts and intelligence from all of these AI jobs built in. So that's really what Fusion 4 delivers. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you at this point, you know, uh, if, if you're one of the more than 400 you know current LisaWorks customers, I, I really hope you'll be able to give Fusion 4 a try soon. Um, and if you're not a customer yet, um, I'd say feel free to download a trial from our website. Um, or otherwise reach out and we'll be happy to talk with you about how we can help you build, uh, how we can help you rapidly build out your own smart applications like we showed today. Um, so I'm actually with that going to hand it over to um, Andy um, Oliver, who I think is going to maybe do some Q&A and um, talk to us a little bit more. Okay, thanks Trey. Um, so we have a few questions from the, uh, from the audience that uh, I'm going to uh, to run through and uh, provide some answers. So the first question is, uh, are the App Studio components derived from TweetKit components? Yes, good question. So um, for those of you who don't know, um, back um, around May of last year, uh, LucidWorks acquired a company called TweetKit, uh, which is where we actually get most of our um, end user interface uh, capabilities. So App Studio, which I showed you earlier, um, is really the culmination of us taking TwigKit and, and their capabilities and integrating them into Fusion. Um, so yes, if you're familiar with the TwigKit platform, um, the ability to build these modular end-user interface components comes from that platform. And App Studio is our you know, tool and our IDE and workflow for actually generating those applications. Uh, but yes, the, um, all the end-user components uh, come from that um, core technology that uh, comes from TwigKit. All right, can Fusion apps be integrated with other analytics tools like Google Analytics? Can Fusion apps be integrated with other analytics tools like Google Analytics? So um, obviously, you know, Google Analytics you can put on your website um, itself. Um, the, the Fusion apps, um, the, the best way that you would want to go about doing that would be to actually um, use the Google Analytics um, APIs and, and pull your signals data into Fusion. Um, if you did that, you could very similarly, you know, show charts and graphs on the same kind of signals that you would collect from Fusion. Um, one nice thing about Fusion's App Insights and App Studio and Fusion Server is we really try to make this a, a nice end-to-end -end ecosystem where everything just works out of the box. So, for example, um, if I build an application, a, a user interface with App Studio, by default out of the box, it automatically collects click signals and you know, searches and, and all of the different kinds of behavior that you might take on that app and feeds it back into Fusion Server um, to, to be able, and, and we have jobs that run in the background to process that data and show it automatically in App Insights. So, um, so yeah, you can absolutely you know, leverage data from you know, whether it's Omniture or Google Analytics and, and pull that in, um, but um, there's a lot of app specific things that you might want to leverage that Google Analytics just isn't going to be able to provide to you. All right. Can you use uh, experiment metrics over time in a gradual way as an engine scoring method? As an engine scoring method. Um, make sure I understand. Um, so yeah, so the, the way experiments work, um, to dive in a little bit under the covers, um, you essentially, when you set up an experiment, the normal way that you would invoke an experiment is through something in Fusion 4 called a, a query profile. What a query profile does is it allows you to tie together a pipeline and a collection. Um, and um, ultimately when requests come in, it routes them there um, appropriately. So when you invoke an experiment on a query profile, what you're actually doing is you're, you're, you're able to tell it, I want you know, 20% of my traffic to run through this experiment instead of the normal behavior. And then that traffic, as it routes into, you know, for example, maybe it routes to a different pipeline, 
or maybe it just tweaks a few um, request parameters, or maybe it actually routes to an entirely different collection if you're trying to, you know, optimize for some maybe some index side changes. But ultimately, once you set that experiment up, when when customers hit um, your profile, they get routed into the experiment, and different users will see different behavior. And so, um, definitely, that behavior gets monitored over time. And we have jobs that run in the back end that are constantly processing, processing and aggregating all of the um, traffic that's flowing through. And so the, um, the analytics you saw, like you know, the MRR, the NDCG, or even click-through metrics or conversion metrics or add-to-cart metrics, all of those um, get processed every time those jobs run in the back end. And you can schedule them to run as, as often as you want to. If you want to run it constantly, you can basically schedule it to run maybe every minute. Or if you only want to run it once a day, you can do that. But every, whatever that schedule you define, that, that gives you your points in time where you can actually see the metrics. So in, in Fusion 4, we tend to focus on cumulative metrics. So if I'm running, for example, a relevancy test or an experiment test, sometimes the, the first day or maybe even the first week uh, will show some changes in behavior that don't necessarily hold true over time. Um, in you know, the search and, and experimentation where we refer to this often as the novelty effect, meaning sometimes when you come to a search engine, you'll actually, um, if you see new results that look different than before, you might interact with them just because they're different, not because they're better. So oftentimes when people run experiments, we want them to actually let the experiment run over, with real user traffic. We want them to let the experiment run for a while so that they can actually see those trend lines normalize to their steady state. Um, and so yeah, our, our metrics, right t today they show mostly the cumulative, so from the beginning of the experiment to the end, um, impact, but you, you absolutely can take snapshots and points in time, and that's how the system's designed, yep. So how will, uh, I'm gonna paraphrase a few questions that came in about this into one. How will uh, Fusion 3.1 applications or earlier version of Fu Fusion 3, or uh, earlier versions of Fusion, um, migrate to the 4.0 and app concept? That's a great question. So one of the things that uh, we've invested a lot in over the last um, year is actually our migration process from different versions of Fusion. So uh, for any customers who are on you know, the Fusion 2 line uh, who've upgraded to Fusion 3, uh, we have scripts for that, but it's not really an automatic process and um, oftentimes it can it can really bite you so it's, it's, it just hasn't been the easiest thing um, going from fusion 3 to 4 however uh, we actually have implemented an entirely new migration process um, that uh, is, is much much more um, painless not to say that it you know you won't run into any issues but our goal is that you don't and so we're, we're very uh, proactive in trying to make sure that this process works end to end um, to that point, uh, I mentioned earlier that we actually have, you know, cloud products now, so our site search application and others. Um, it's critical for us for the success of those products to be able to actually automatically upgrade them on a pretty much consistent, constant basis. You know, if I want to roll out a change to our cloud applications, I need to do that, you know, in, in days or, or weeks. I, I can't have these long, drawn-out upgrade um, cycles. So the investments that we've made um, in migrations and upgrades, actually, you know, we're dog fooding them ourselves and trying to make them completely seamless end to end. Uh, we're we're not quite there, but we're we're getting mu we're getting pretty close. Um, so our customers, obviously, running Fusion on prem will benefit from that greatly. Um, to answer the question about migrating to the apps concept specifically, um, the best way to think about it is once you upgrade from Fusion three to Fusion four. Uh, because previous versions of Fusion didn't have the concept of an app, they focused mostly on collections. What we do during that migration is we actually create a default app. So anything you've done in our previous version, say Fusion 3, when you upgrade, you'll have an, a default app created that all of your previous objects and collections and everything get put into. And then from there, if you want to take that app and divide those objects into multiple apps, you have the ability to do that um, you know, through our user interface or through our APIs uh, very seamlessly. Uh, but that, that's the general idea. Um, just assume that in a prior version of Fusion, you had an app, you just didn't know it, and it's your default app. And when you get to Fusion 4, you'll have the ability to create more than just that one app. All right, I'm gonna, uh, we are way over time, so I'm gonna ask one last, uh, put one last question through. Anybody who didn't get their question uh, answered will follow up offline. Um, but so last question, is it possible to perform individual, say, named user search result recommendations 
based on a user's past history. Named user search result recommendations based upon user's past history. User search results. So the recommendations basically, uh, it sounds like. Um, so yeah, in, um, it, that's a recommendations question, Andy, I assume? Yeah, so basically they're asking about uh, items for user recommendations. Sure, sure, yep. So um, I showed an example earlier of item to item recommendations. Um, after I, you know, set, I basically clicked the button and created recommendations, um, uh, you know, that I showed you the user interface where we dragged and dropped that smart panel that did item for item recommendations. Um, one of the other things that I briefly showed when I was showing the, the user interface there was actually that when you enable recommendations in Fusion, we, we actually create two different jobs and two different um, pipelines. One is for item to item and the other is for items, for user to item, sorry. So yeah, based upon um, your users, you know, there's a user ID typically that's passed in on, on searches. Um, there's a job that runs automatically in the background, aggregates that information and generates recommendations um, for particular users to recommend items. And yeah, just it's point and click out of the box actually. You can customize it as much as you want to, but it's definitely there um, and, and definitely a very powerful feature of Fusion. All right. Well, uh, I just want to uh, point out if, uh, if Trey, you can go to the previous slide, uh, that we have some additional webinars coming up. The first is uh, the head and tail analysis in Fusion 4. We'll go into detail about head and tail analysis and how it works. We also have the learning to rank uh, webinar coming up April 4th. That's going to look at how you can use the learning to rank algorithm that's built into solar to improve your results. And also, when you use that with Fusion Signals, you can improve it even further. And so one of our uh, data engineers is going to go over how that works and the kind of improvements that you can expect to see. And then April 11th, we have the LucidWorks Site Search Overview. So you'll be able to uh, look at the new Site Search prod, uh, product and see how that, uh, how that uh, looks and, and maybe uh, see what uh, that might do for your data. So if, uh, if you would, check out our uh, website under webinars and take a look at, uh, sign up for any of those coming up. You'll also probably get a uh, notification. Keep an eye out for that and uh, hope to uh, see you guys on a future webinar. So thank you guys for coming. It was, uh, uh, hopefully you got something out of this and keep the uh, great questions coming. We'll, uh, we'll follow up uh, offline. Thanks guys.